and now we are halfway through the game. Halfway through. Halfway through the game. Alright. These little guys that jump up are so dang annoying. But you know what? I love the spin dash. The spin dash takes care of those guys like they're nothing. Makes it so much easier than having to deal with them normally. I'm perhaps a little overcautious in getting air bubbles, but eh, saves you time in the end. If you, because if you die, that's a lot to play over. Also saves me time editing if I don't have to remove death. <laughs> Just gotta be good. That's all. You know, this ain't a bad water level, but it definitely ain't the best one. We all know the best one is Hydrocity Zone. This one ain't bad, though. Certainly introduces a lot of the ideas the other ones work with. I think that the uh, Labyrinth Zone, the bub the pal of Bubbles releases an air bubble at like almost twice the rate that the one in Scrap Brain 3 does. Because I never really have to worry about dying while waiting for a bubble, but that happens several times in Lab in Scrap Brain 3. Which is pretty much a different colored Labyrinth Zone that's much harder. Now this is a death that pretty much anybody first time playing might get. If you're quick, you can dodge that spike. But if you're like me, the first instinct is to duck down because it looks like you'll still fit. And it doesn't work that way. You'll die. So don't do it. Checkpoint. I'm trying to take my time with these little spears because, well... I remember last time I played, I was getting hit by him a lot. And it's because I was, I was in too much of a rush. See, Sonic's supposed to be fast, but this first game, like, they're a lot more meth They want you to be a lot more methodical in the way you're, you're platforming, I think, than in the other games. I think two, I think, here's what I think it is. One's very methodical in the way you play. Two is much faster, and three has much more uh, exploration and variety in the roots. Those are the strengths of each one. And CD is, of course, a completely different game almost. That's its own strength, and it's completely unique. And this guy will hit you if you don't know what's coming, so be prepared to jump. A lot of things that just kind of hit you before, because you don't know they're up ahead. Cutting it a little close on this one here, I think. I get the rings, and then I get the bubble to save time. And even though you're tempted because you're afraid of drowning, oftentimes it's better to just slow down in these little areas. You get plenty of time. And that's especially true for the actual boss fight. It's much easier if you just take your time. If you get hit and get knocked down, that's how you end up dead. And that was only Act 1. Four minutes on Act 1. Which, you know, is short compared to some games, but... It felt long in this one. In an hour-long game, maybe an hour 15 if you're doing all the special stages... Oh, 
Okie dokie. The music's not bad for this level. I don't think it's as good as Aquatic Ruins or Hydra City City. Or even Tidal Tempest. Though I kind of... You know what? Even though I kind of prefer the US version of Tidal Tempest, I'm usually thinking of the Japanese soundtrack for CD. You know that one? Something like that. For some reason, I thought there was something to open down there. That's why I went back down. But that is not the case. We have to go up. Get them stars and don't worry about it. So honestly, because the air bubbles, the stars only get you so far. If you want to get past the most obvious traps as quick as possible, then worry about air. If I'd been a little faster, I wouldn't have to deal with this guy. Oh well. See how fast the next bubble came? That would never have happened in Scrap Brain 3. Farewell, rings. Oh no! That drowning music is so iconic. Just... I think that... I think that drowning music alone has made some people afraid of water. I think it has. One more act to go. Let's get our act together. Or not. So obviously this is the infinite vertical scroller. So yeah, you can do the first one to get the shield and then wait till after the first one to jump to move on. Simple, simple. And of course jump to the right. All those rings and no special stage to use them on. The game's mocking you. Though so maybe they thought people actually cared about like high score still at this point. I was too young to go to arc for to really experience arcades when this came out, you know. As my like first gen like my first game. Oh yeah, this was my first game. Huh. You know, I didn't get very far for it being my first game. I usually couldn't get past Marble Zone. Or no, Spring Yard Zone. I usually couldn't get past Spring Yard Zone. Because of the way curling into a ball and all that kind of stuff works in that level. So this was my first game, and Genesis was my first system, but I got a original NES, like, not long after that. So I played a lot of NES games, even though they were kind of, I guess, past their time. I mean, like, these Sonic games were coming out as I was, like... I was, like, three when I got a Genesis. So, like... Sonic CD came out by the time I started playing these games, so I was like a couple years behind. And of course, got a PlayStation. 
around the same around the time that Mega Man X4 came out. Whatever, whatever, whatever year that was. Probably on the play. Actually, you know what? It was probably it was probably around the PlayStation's release because I remember getting a Sega Saturn and then my mom decided to return it and get a PlayStation instead in a very short amount of time. Like they bought it and then she like she almost changed her mind immediately or something. Or maybe, maybe somebody told her the Saturn was doomed. Maybe it was like a, already the Saturn had the writing on the wall, and that's why she returned it so quickly. I don't remember. I don't know why she did that. Either way, probably pretty thankful for it because the PlayStation. Hey, Saturn's got some good stuff, but only half of it made it here, and the PlayStation's amazing. I really do want to look into some Saturn games, though. It's like a console I've never really touched, but I feel like there's some stuff that would fit the bill pretty well for the kind of stuff I like. Sega CD, too. I want to look more into the Sega CD. I played Sonic CD, and I played Snatcher, and that's about it. Sonic CD and Snatcher are good games, so I have a 2 and 2 ratio. Good to bad games for the Sega CD. Yeah, that boss is a lot easier if you take your time. Like, it happened before I even made a comment about it, 